Oh, hello there. Welcome back to Vandalizing Your Self-Esteem. <laughs> Just kidding. Today we're going to talk about the Second Empire of France under Napoleon III, the Houseman Project, and the building of Impressionism in conversations that don't help with making friends or trivia. So our story begins in 1848, and that was when a lot of the world was going through revolution. Actually, if you think 2020 was a gong show, 1848, there were um, revolutions happening all over the world. Through the magic of television, I can show you all of the um, places where revolutions are happening. It mostly had to do with conflict between the monarchy, um, establishing responsible government, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And in 1848, Napoleon III was elected to be the first president of France. And just as a um, clarification, there were three main Napoleons. There was the first, Napoleon I was like the one that you hear about all the time that's in the movies with the cute little hat and all of that stuff. Um, he was, you could talk about him for, for years and years and years. But he went away and then he had a son who was the second Napoleon, but he was kind of like a trust fund baby. There's not, he wasn't really that important. And he died at 21 of tuberculosis. The third Napoleon was the cousin of the first Napoleon or the nephew of the first Napoleon. And not a lot is written or known about him, but he became the first president of France um, in 1848. And by 1852, 1853, he had dissolved the government and declared himself an emperor or dictator. So he was basically trying to completely reform Paris uh, from the ground up. He wanted to tear the whole thing down and start over again, but was finding the um, constraints of democracy to be a little bit too slow for him. And he wasn't able to get anything accomplished in his four-year term and was faced with the prospect of not being in power anymore. So he just dissolved the government and took over. So he hires this guy named Halsman, Baron Halsman. Every time I say his name, I think of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Halsman. Um, Baron Halsman was a prefect, which is kind of like a governor. And he gave Halsman just carte blanche to do whatever the F he wanted in terms of tearing down Paris and starting over. So by the 1840s, um, Paris was described as a dump. If you are from Paris and you're offended, I mean, the facts are facts. So the operative word to describe Paris during this time was putrid. It was described as a place where only half of the children survived. Mortality was very high. Disease was rampant. Um, the canals and the, the waterways throughout the city, people were just dumping industrial waste. Human waste was going into these rivers. It was just a gross place. And also with the lack of sort of urban planning, it was just like a maze of grossness so like sunlight couldn't really penetrate in it was dark it was dingy and it was just kind of like an eyesore in europe no one really wanted to go or be in paris um and napoleon wanted to the third wanted to rip it all down and start from scratch so we can start with the negatives of the houseman project first so the houseman project took place but um, it started in 1853 and he was fired um in 1870 so it went on for a good chunk of time, but it would still go on for about 50 to 60 years after he was fired. Um, it just kept going because the projects were so huge. So the negatives first is that it displaced about 100,000 Parisians to the outskirts of town by basically their houses were just completely torn down. The taxes went up, rent was tripled. This was probably like the biggest mass scale gentrification project in history. I don't know if if there's another one that kind of rivals this but yeah paris was flattened they moved everyone out and they built all these nice sort of buildings and wide boulevards in the center of the town so i guess the displacement of the of the people that were there and the very high cost that um it incurred were the negatives on the positive side disease and infectious infectious disease went down significantly over six hundred thousand trees were planted um, most of the architecture, the classic architecture that you see in Paris today is a result of the Houseman Project. Um, it brought in new business. It drove the um, industrial, like so the factories would have to then operate outside of Paris. And they also created some of the most beautiful parks 
um, in France that still rival other world parks to this day and would later inspire a lot of famous artwork. So in 1859, a man by the name of Edouard Manet painted a painting called The Absinthe Drinker, or The Drinker. It's, it's kind of afterwards called The Absinthe Drinker, and submitted it to the Salon of 19, 1859. So the Salon was this sort of expose like this exhibition of artists that Paris would host from the mid 1600s onward. It was very important if you were a working artist to be displayed at the salon because winners that got prizes from there would usually be hired on by the monarchy to paint official portraits so you would get all of the good commissions. And art up until this point in time so we'd had like neoclassicism which was sort of a a reinterpretation of the Renaissance, so very like mythical sort of looking paintings. There was Baroque, Rococo paintings, and it was sort of translating into realism. So instead of painting um, like the bourgeoisie or these like pastoral scenes where with rich aristocrats or mythology, people were starting to paint the everyday person. And by 1859, Edouard Manet painted The Drinker, um, which shows a man it's all it's very dark and there's an empty bottle of absinthe there's a glass of absinthe there and it was rejected from the salon and it was described as being like very ugly it wasn't no one really liked it and it was considered to be um, very gaudy or offensive because it was sort of poking fun at the results of this houseman project where people would just they had nowhere to go and a lot of people were just drunk on absinthe all the time. So absinthe came into Paris in the 1840s um, through soldiers who had been conquesting in Africa and brought it back as a, it was used as a medicine against malaria there. I don't know how effective that was, but it quickly spread through Europe in the 1840s. And it was so popular in Paris that 5 p.m. was called the green hour because everybody was just wasted by 5 p.m. on the absinthe. So the social commentary for that was just that people were sort of poor and drunk all the time. And it was um, a call out to the plight of the working class, the underclass in Paris at that time. And of course, the upper classes, the people that were creating this, these lovely boulevards in Paris, they didn't really like that. And they also didn't like Manet's style of painting. So this is sort of a springboard for the next few years where artists who were trying to paint scenes of real people. So the previous like art movement was called realism where people like you know sewers or milliners or like dancers or maids or nuns those sorts of things were being painted but it didn't have as much negative social commentary and a lot of people were getting rejected from the salons so this sort of gave birth to the counter movement um, of the impressionists and they would come a little bit later because their works were not painted. You're like, you know, you weren't doing portraits of the king or anything like that. They were interested in painting real people in Paris. So in 1876, um, we can look at another painting by Degas called uh, Dans le Café or L'Absinthe, depending on which way you want to look at it. This is another painting of um, an absent drinker that was done several years later, um, 12... Oh, I'm, I'm, my math is awful, but whatever. 15 years later, 1875, 1876, this painting um, was submitted not to the salon, but by this point in time, after being rejected from the salons or not featured heavily in state-sponsored exhibitions, the Impressionists started holding their own ex ex exhibitions, which were very, very popular. And neither Degas nor Manet were really Impressionists. They sort of existed in the periphery of the movement. But this painting as well was seen as being, you know, very ugly or it wasn't, it wasn't a good social message. But again, Degas was very interested in painting real people and real situations. And looking at this lady, she's just a pissed off, tired woman who is over it and sitting in a cafe getting high on absinthe, which is a very good point of social commentary um, when thinking about how the Haussmann projects affected the people of Paris. And yeah, so up until about 18, 1929, the Haussmann projects continued. Um, Napoleon III was deposed. He lost a war in 1870 and he was axed. And this movement gave birth to all sorts of new modern art movements, the Impressionists, the Cubists, um, and then moving into war, Dadaism, and the birth of what the layman would call 
modern art. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble about this. If you liked this conversation and would like to hear more, in particular about art, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Bye.